Open University. I have an apology to make. There are some things I haven't been telling you. Pieces I never did. Straight to camera confessions which I should have made. For a start, I haven't told you about the butterfly broken on the wheel. No one breaks a butterfly on a wheel, except Graham Lanham. Let me tell you about the British-Irish comedian. He was uh, wandering in a forest one day, it was the New Forest. He saw a butterfly. He is a lepidopterist, and that means someone who catches leopards and turns them into butterflies by breaking them on wheels. Um, it happened the same day that he saw a wheel. He saw an old Ford Zodiac, which had been abandoned as scrap in the forest in a sort of hollow, an inclination. It was half filled with water. Graham Linehan, the Anglo-Irish comedian went to the edge of this and looked over the crater. He saw the zodiac, he saw the wheel, he already had the butterfly in his collector case because he is a collector of leopards, which he t turns into butterflies. But if he finds a butterfly ready-made, in his mind, it has already been a leopard at some point, and so he's simply uh, um, been spared the work. He sees the wheel, he thinks, I wonder what happens if I break this butterfly on a wheel. Uh, perhaps it will turn back into a leopard. And so he goes down, he has a, a, a spanner with him, a wrench, as you Americans would say, and he starts to take the wheel off the car. This is very easy because the axles are all rusty. And um, he takes the wheel off, he takes the hubcap off. It's actually rather a nice chrome, shiny hubcap. He puts that in a separate pocket of his rucksack because he collects those as well. These are things you didn't know about the Anglo-Irish comedian. I promise you they're all true. And. Um, so he eventually gets the, the important part of the wheel. He's, he's a bit of a, a perfectionist, he's a little bit anal, so he does take out a kind of shoehorn and take the tire off the rim of the wheel and also take the inner tube out of the tire. And he puts those carefully in a separate place because he knows that the rate of decomposition of rubber is different from the rate of decomposition of metal in the other components of a car. Plastic, for instance, is the very last thing to decompose. That car will be there for approximately 32,000 years, Graham Linehan computes. He knows these kind of facts, they're at his fingertips. They're, in fact, alternative facts, as we would call them today. Something I specialize in, as you can tell. But um, he um, is determined not to, be, um, not to be put off his mission, which is to um, get the wheel and to put the butterfly onto it. But as soon as the wheel is stripped and he puts a little brasso and sort of other metal polishing fluids onto the wheel to make sure it's in the best condition to break the butterfly. He, he reaches for the pocket of his rucksack in which the butterfly has been very carefully deposited. He actually, to keep butterflies in a, a good condition, you really have to have them in a vacuum sealed pack. So he actually has one of these and it's very difficult because you have to, to carry a bicycle pump with you, a very tiny bicycle pump about that size, and pump the air out of the vacuum pack. And then it has a structural uh, integrity which allows the butterfly to, to slip in there. Of course, you have to do it very quickly, otherwise the uh, air rushes into the vacuum. I mean, actually faster than the speed of sound, you have to get that butterfly in. It's called the butterfly speed for lepidopterists, that is, leopard collectors who turn their animals into butterflies. Once you, your leopard is that size, you slip it into the vacuum and then it's packed. But um, in, in this case, uh, he, he reaches and he finds that there has been somehow a breach in that little packet and that the, the, the butterfly has been destroyed. It's now two separated wings and they've turned different colours, which is very bizarre. One of them is purple, the other one is a kind of aquamarine. And so he takes the two wings and he, he, he gets, because, you know, even perfectionists realise they have to do a botched job sometimes. So he takes a, a little reel of sellotape out of his, um, that's scotch tape to American viewers, out of his other side pocket. He has many, many pockets and a kind of waistcoat. He was inspired um, by Joseph Boyce when he was younger. Joseph Boyce, of course, adopted a uniform. He was bald and he, he wore trilby hats, very elegant, expensive 
Shelby sure Hats to cover that. But also he liked to um, not to wear a jacket because that made him look like a corporate figure, a businessman. He was already working in Dusseldorf. He's from Kleve, uh, Joseph Boyce, which is a, a region in the north of Germany, in the northwest of Germany, almost near Holland, actually. Imagine a Dutch Joseph Boyce really wouldn't have worked. But anyway, so um, he, he didn't want to look like a businessman from Kleve who'd come to Dusseldorf to do business. He was teaching at the art school. He wore these um, hunter's jackets, a Jäger jacket, as we say uh, in German, we Germans. Um, and um, so uh, Graham Linehan, the Anglo-Irish comedian, had adopted this at the age of 20 when he saw Joseph Boyce. Joseph Boyce, at the very last, um, the twilight of his life, if you like, uh, was um, sitting at a bus stop in Clapham. Um, he was signing posters for the ladies, the, the simple, humble people of London who clustered around him because, of course, London people adore artists, as you know. They adore especially conceptual artists and performance artists. This is really um, not something you'll ever read in the Daily Mail, but it's um, actually very true. I've found with English people, all you have to do is walk with, um, uh, for instance, Jeremy Deller. If you walk with Jeremy Deller through a, a, a mining town in the north of England, even if they voted for Brexit, they're still going to cluster around and say, Jeremy Deller, I... I can't do the accent. Jeremy Deller, um, you are our hero. They'll essentially be saying this is what the subtitles would say in the um, Pathetown News feature, which I imagine being made about Jeremy Deller's visit to this um, northern English town. Um, incidentally, when I was with Jeremy Deller actually on that trip, it was a, a trip to a, a town called Curlington, we, um, we made a, a, a brief visit to a local glass factory because it's something Deller interests himself in. Um, he, he lowers himself, if you like, to the level of the glass blower. Um, of course, glass blowing is a, a dying art because nobody has the puff anymore. Um, they consider themselves um, effeminate um, now, and they're proud of that. They're also proud of their understanding of contemporary art. But unfortunately, the glass factory has had to be closed down, and Della wanted to use the space to, um, to put together what he called a, a puff orchestra. Uh, he wanted to do acid house hits uh, done simply with the sound of human breathing. A lot quieter and to my ears much more acceptable. I suffer from low level tinnitus and um, the idea of house music uh, toned down in any way appeals to me and so I was very supportive of this. I put in some PayPal money into his account for instance at least um, 37 euros and um, the, the project was fairly successful but, but anyway I mean, I, it's a, a, a bit of a diversion that story because we were with Graham Linehan, the Anglo-Irish comedian he was in the forest and he discovered that his two uh, butterfly wings would not join back together, even with scotch tape or sellotape as we call it. So he got out a little bottle of Brasso and he found that if he sprinkled the Brasso on the left wing of the butterfly, it turned the same colour as the right wing, namely a sort of turquoisey, greeny, orangey, purpley, mustardy, reddy, bluey, browny, only a sort of turquoisey, greeny, orangey, purpley, mustardy, reddy, bluey, browny, only a sort of turquoisey, greeny, orangey, purpley, mustardy, reddy, bluey, browny, um, kind of ultraviolet colour, which could only be seen with special glasses, which of course Linehan had in the special pocket at the very top of his um, rucksack. Rucksacks, by the way, have become the new briefcases. This is something that astounds me. The, the main observation I make when I return to London these days is that uh, businessmen um, don't trust public transport anymore, partly because they would be blown up on it, but also because uh, there are so many cyclists now cycling up and down the uh, tube trains. They actually can open the doors. They're sort of stunt BMX cyclists, but they are actually businessmen. They manage to do sort of um, somersaults on their bikes and, and jump through the windows that uh, are, are often lowered because it's very hot in the tube trains. They go from carriage to carriage doing these stunts, going through any open windows, and some of them land in the tunnels outside, but that's fine because they, they're on bicycles. They can actually go, in many cases, faster than the train. So as I was saying, um, when Enoch Powell made this speech, he knew that the, there was no actual way that he could justify the, measure of the tr metaphor of the trees, because the trees were not spreading. Dunsinane would not come to, um, to Fortescue and Snyder, the hunting operative outfitters. I went there with my father in 1965. He wanted to buy some galoshes 
to trample uh, the opposition. He went in, he actually put it in those terms to the shop assistant, I want to trample the opposition. The man unfazed said, uh, we have just the thing, sir. And he went into a back room, didn't emerge, he didn't come back for about 10 minutes, and me and my father got a little bit restive, which means the same thing as restless, uh, which is, has almost confused me, to be restive and to be restless. You'd think they would be opposites, but they're actually, they have the same meaning. Anyway, we went down into a little cellar in the back of the shop where we heard a rummaging sound, thinking this was the shop assistant looking for the galoshes which would trample the opposition. But, in fact, it was an angel. An angel actually being born out of a sort of cocoon, because angels, as you know, are insects. This is something every Andean knows, that an angel, that if you put one on the hook of your fishing rod, you will actually catch sinners and not fish, because sinners are inherently attracted to angels. This is something, uh, it's not really spelled out in the Bible, so the inherent um, yin-yang relationship of sin to um, redemption, but obviously they're, they're very closely linked, and if you are a sinner, you're always looking for an angel to save you from your, your sins. Um, anyway, uh, the, the angel was born, and it turned out to be a butterfly, and it had two different coloured wings. And this is exactly the same butterfly that Graham Lineham found in the New Forest. I just thought I'd tell you that today. Open University.